Hello everyone, this is Dr. E and for today, pag-uusapan naman natin yung proportions na associated sa lesson natin on similarities sa pag-solve ng mga word problems involving fractions. In mathematics, bukod sa mastery ng ating mga basic operations, especially yung ating multiplication table, kinakailangan din natin na matutunan na yung mga notations or kung paano natin isulat yung ating mga math expressions according sa verbal descriptions ng mga ito para mas maintindihan natin kung paano tayo mag-solve ng mga word problems na madalas ay kinatatakutan ng mga estudyante. So, yan yung pag-uusapan natin today on how to work with similarities or proportion para maintindihan natin yung uh, mga word problems associated sa lesson natin in geometry. So, ratio in um, fraction form or in mathematical form, pwede din natin siyang tawaging fraction. So, a ratio is the quotient of two quantities at ang associated na operation pagdating sa ratio ay syempre ay ang division. Pero marami tayong uri ng paraan ng pagsulat ng division problem or ng fraction form ng ating mga word problem tulad nito. The ratio of 1 to 2, pwede natin siyang isulat as verbal form, which is 1 to 2. Pwede din natin siyang isulat in fraction form, or pwede din natin gamitin yung uh, column na symbol to express ratio sa mathematics. So, lahat ng yan, yung mga uri ng uh, pamamaraan ng pagsulat natin ng ratio, ay kadalasan natin nakikita sa ating mga math problems, at kung minsan, nai-intimidate tayo kapag nakakita tayo ng kakaibang mga notations or pamamaraan ng pagsulat sa math, na inaakala natin na mahirap na siyang sagutan. So napakahalaga na alam natin yung pagsulat ng basic ratio notation para mas maintindihan natin yung mga problems associated dito. So ang basa natin dito, so kahit siya in fraction form, usually ang basa natin dyan ay 1 half or 1 is to 2 or 1 all over 2 at yung isa pang taguri dyan na pwede natin uh, makita sa mga math problems would be the ratio of 1 to 2. So, yan yung ating mga uh, notations about ratio. Now, paano naman tayo magsulat ng tama from ratio in fraction form? Dahil mahalaga na alam natin kung paano siya isulat tulad nito, paano natin isusulat yung ratio ng 12 to 17 in fraction form? So, in fraction form, pwede natin siyang isulat as 12 over 17. Now, pag sinulat ba natin yung sinasabi nating ratio, Pangit ng sulat ko, ratio of 12 to 17. Sabi nga natin dito, pwede natin siyang isulat in fraction form like this. Pero ito ba ay pwede din natin isulat as 17 all over 2? At ang sagot dyan ay hindi. So, mahalaga na yung unang numerical value na nakikita ninyo sa inyong statements or sa inyong mga verbal phrases yun yung magiging numerator nyo at yung pangalawang numerical value sa inyong mga verbal phrases, yun yung magiging denominator nyo. So kung ang sabi ay kunin or isulat yung ratio of 17 to 12, doon lang natin pwedeng isulat ang ating fraction form na 17 all over 12. 12 pala to, hindi 2, para magtugma at tumama doon sa ating verbal phrase. So yan yung halaga ng pagsulat ng mga mathematical symbols at mathematical notations dahil dyan tayo magkakamali kung sa pagsulat pa lang, mali na yung ating pagkakasunod-sunod, yung pagsagot natin using our algebra o yung ating mga math process, hindi na rin siya magiging tama. So ang ratio ng 12 to 17 ay pwede 12 over 17 at kung Kukunin natin yung simplest form ng fraction given by this ratio na $15 to $10. So, ibig sabihin yan, susulat natin siya in fraction form. So, magiging $15 all over $10 yung ating fraction form. At kung isisimplify natin to pwede na natin i-drop yung ating dollar Symbol at 15 all over 10 na lang yung isusulat natin. At sa pag-simplify ng fraction, 
factoring yung usually ginagamit ko para mas maintindihan at ma-master nyo na yung ating factoring technique. So, 15, it can be simplified by 3 times 5. At ang 10, pwede naman siyang 2 times 5. And by doing so, we can eliminate 5. So, 3 all over 2, ang simplest form ng ating ratio in this particular form. So, yan yung halaga ng pagsulat ng ating mga ratio sa tamang form dahil pag inuna nyo si 10 at yun ang naging numerator nyo, magiging mali na yung inyong solution. So, sa 15 to 10, pwede natin siyang isulat sa 15 all over 10. By factoring, we can cancel out 5. So, 3 all over 2 ang simplest form ng ratio na $15 to 10. Dollars. At kung meron naman tayong problem involving diagram like this one, so may nakikita tayong rectangle na merong giving links at width at kailangan na, na visualize nyo yung uh, problem niyo para kung sasagutin natin tong problem na find the ratio of its width to its length, masasagutan natin ito ng tama at kung kukunin naman natin yung ratio ng length to the perimeter, masasagutan din natin yan using yung mga technique na ipinakita ko sa inyo. So, dito sa problem na ito, kung sasagutin natin yung unang tanong na ratio ng width to its length, so, nauna sa atin yung width at ang width natin dito ay 5 feet, so, W is 2 length, at yung ating width dito ay 5 feet, at ang ating length ay 7 feet. So, tanggalin natin yung unit of measurement. So, meron tayong 5 over 7. At ito na yung ating ratio in fraction form ng ating uh, length or width to length ng ating uh, problem for this particular rectangle. So, ang ratio ng width to length, isulat nyo W to L, which is W all over L. So, 5 feet all over 7, get rid of the unit of measurement dahil yung kailangan lang natin is yung fraction form ng ating given value. So, 5 over 7 ang magiging ratio natin dun sa problem letter A. Now, so problem letter B, find the ratio of its length to its perimeter. Ang problema natin dito, alam natin yung length, pero ano naman yung perimeter at paano natin siya masasagutan kung wala namang perimeter na binigay sa atin. Kaya, kailangan natin yung ating understanding o yung ating mastery sa formula ng geometry. Kung ito ay 7 at ito ay 5, pag sinabing perimeter, ito yung haba ng ating mga sides. So, kung ito ay 5, ito ay congruent dito dahil ito ay rectangle. At kung ito ay 7, ito rin ay 7. So, twice of 7 plus twice of 5 Yan yung perimeter ng ating rectangle, kaya 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times 5 is 10. So, ibig sabihin, ang perimeter natin ay 24. So, kailangan muna natin kunin yung perimeter dahil sabi dito, kailangan daw natin isulat yung ratio ng length to the perimeter. So, length to perimeter so, dapat mauuna yung length all over perimeter. At ano ba ang length ng ating rectangle? Ang length natin ay 7 feet all over 24 feet. At since fraction lang ang kailangan natin, tanggalin natin yung unit of measurement. At meron tayong 7 all over 24. At alam natin na ito na yung simplest form niya. So, ito na yung ating ratio pagdating sa length to perimeter relationship ng ating rectangle. So, kinuha natin yung perimeter na 24 feet and then meron na tayo yung perimeter at alam natin yung length. Isulat natin ng tama yung ating mga fraction para makuha natin yung fraction or ratio na hinahanap natin which is 7 all over 24. So, since alam na natin mag-convert ng mga ratio from verbal statement to its algebraic form or mathematical form, magsagot naman tayo ng mga word problems involving ratio or yung tinatawag nating extended 
ratio. So according to this problem, the lengths of the side of a triangle are in the extended ratio 3 is to 5 is to 6. Now the perimeter of the triangle is 98 units. What is the length of each side of this particular triangle? So sa pagsagot ng ating mga word problem, lalong lalo na sa geometry, mas mainam na may visual tayo doon sa problem na sinasagutan natin at ang kailangan natin i-produce dito ay yung triangle. At meron siyang perimeter na 98 units at binigyan tayo ng ratio ng mga side lengths ng ating triangle which is 3 is to 5 is to 6. So paano natin i-translate yan into a mathematical equation? So alam natin na 3 is to 5 is to 6 ang ating ratio or extended ratio na tinatawag ng ating triangle. So gawa tayo ng triangle na my 3 is to 5 is to 6 ratio. So let's say 3 is to 5 is to 6 ratio. Since magkakaiba yung ratio ng kanyang side length, so ito yung magiging uh, 3 is to 5 is to 6 ratio natin ng ating triangle. But since sinahanap natin yung side length, gawin natin siya in algebraic form dahil since meron tayong hinahanap, i-change natin to into 3x is to 5x is to 6x, which means kailangan natin kunin yung mga side length niya using this visual. At since alam na natin yung ating visual, sabi dito sa ating problem, ang perimeter ng ating triangle ay equal to 98 units. At ano ba ang formula ng perimeter? Ang formula ng perimeter ay yung sum ng mga side length ng ating polygon, and in this case, triangle. So pwede natin i-add si 3x plus 5x plus 6x equal to 98 para makuha natin yung value ng x at makuha natin yung mga sukat ng ating mga side length. So 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 6 is 14, so meron tayong 14x equal to 98, and then divide both sides by 14. So that x will be by itself and 98 all over 14 when we use our division uh, or multiplication table. So kailangan alam yung multiplication table. So given the triangle, 3 is to 5 is to 6, 3x, 5x, and 6x will give us the equation 3x plus 5x plus 6x equal to 98. And using algebra, we know that x is equal to 7. So 7 units ang value ng x. So that means makukuha na natin yung value ng ating mga side length dahil imumultiply na lang natin si 7 by 3, 7 times 5, and 7 times x at makukuha na natin yung side length na hinahanap natin. And in this case, meron tayong 21 units, meron tayong 35 units, at meron tayong 42 units as the measurement of the side lengths of our triangle, knowing that we are understanding yung ating extended ratio na tinatawag. So, yan yung pagsagot natin ng ating uh, unang word problem when it comes to uh, ratio and similarity. Now, paano naman natin kukunin yung tinatawag nating extremes at saka yung means ng ating proportion or ng ating ratio. So sa pag-solve ng ating mga ratio, makikita natin dito meron tayong dalawang fractions. 2 over 3 is equal to 4 all over 6. And when we are talking about proportion and operations involving two fractions, in between an equation, so to be able to simplify this, gagamit tayo ng cross multiplication. So kung meron tayong 2 all over 3 and 4 all over 6, meron tayong tinatawag na extremes at saka yung means. At itong first diagonal natin, yan yung tinatawag nating extremes sa ratio and proportion. At yung second diagonal natin, ito yung tinatawag nating means. And uh, why is this important? It's because kapag ka kinuha natin yung uh, ratio ng 2 over 3 equal to 4 over 6, ito yung magiging means natin. 
At ito naman, yung tinatawag nating extremes dahil nasa dulo siya ng ating ratio or ng proportion ng ating fraction. So, yan yung ating uh, form when it comes to proportion. And since meron tayong extreme at saka means, pwede natin gamitin ngayon yung tinatawag nating cross multiplication as an operation pertaining to our fraction. So, how do we use cross multiplication? So, kung meron tayong 2 over 3, equal to 4 all over 6, we multiply this 2 together, which is our extreme, 2 times 6, equal to the means, which is 3 times 4. And now we know that they are equal or the same because this is just equal to 12. And what we just did is what we call as the cross-multiplication process in mathematics dahil meron tayong fraction equal or equated to another fraction. So dito natin gagamitin yung tinatawag natin cross-multiplication and the cross-multiplication operation will only work for fractions in between an equal sign. So hindi natin tinatawag na cross-multiplication yan kung ang Operation natin in between two fractions will be addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. So it will only work for an equation similar to this one. And since we know that cross multiplication will apply to a fraction equal to a fraction, let's solve for the values of x for these two examples. So yung unang example natin, meron tayong 6 over x equal to 5 over 4. So paano natin gagamitin yung ating cross multiplication? So we have 6 over x equal to 5 over 4. By cross multiplication, i-multiply natin itong dalawang ito at itong dalawang ito, 5 times x, and we'll have 6 times 4 is equal to uh, 24, equal to 5x. So we divide both sides by 5 para si x will be by itself. So ang sagot natin dito ay 24 over 5 as the value of our x in this operation. So, in this problem number one, what we did was we cross multiply. So, yan yung tinatawag nating extreme at ito naman yung tinatawag nating means. And when we multiply it, we have 6 times 4 equal 5x or 24 all over 5 for the values of x. At kung meron naman tayong problem number two, mapapansin nyo na meron tayong expression instead of regular fraction. So, kung meron tayong y plus 4 all over 9 equals y all over 3, by cross multiplication, we are going to multiply this two together. So, we have 3 times y plus 4 equal to 9 times y or 9y. So, what we can do is to distribute this so we have 3y plus 12 equal to 9y. And then we subtract 3y on both sides. So meron tayong 12 is equal to 6y. And by dividing by 6, meron na tayong y value which is equal to 2. And we're able to solve that using algebra and the operation of cross multiplication. And again, um, cross multiplication will only work for a fraction equal to a fraction. So we have 3 times y plus 4 and 9 times y. And by simplifying our equation, we're able to produce the value of y, which is equal to 2 using this operation. So yan yung ating lesson on ratio and proportion. So kailangan nating malaman yung mga operations involving this uh, math problem. At para sa number bender challenge yun naman for today, ay gagamitin ninyo yung inyong mga bagong skill para kunin naman yung perimeter or yung side length ng ating tri triangle given the information na meron tayo. So sa mga kakasa ng ating number bender challenge for today, comment it down below ano nga ba ang mga value ng mga side lengths natin dito sa triangle na ito. Kayang-kaya nyo na yan using the extended ratio on proportion na pinag natin for today. At yan ang lesson natin sa geometry or sa algebra or sa basic math na pwede nyo gamitin sa pag-solve ng word problems ninyo at pag-intindi sa kahalagahan ng similarities when it comes to geometry. So this is Dr. E. 
practice lang tayo para mas gumaling tayo sa mathematics. And see you again next time. Bye!